Yes, sir. What's your name? Uh, Zach. Zach, go ahead. Hi. Uh, so I am I am a Christ follower. Uh, I uh, I believe in the young earth, obviously, and creationism, all that. Uh -huh. um, but I know a big point of contention is typically revolves around like carbon dating and evolution. Um, I've heard some pretty good arguments in favor of Christianity and creationism. Uh, but what are your you know points usually that you would say to to, to that? Age of the Earth? Yeah, like the age of the Earth, or, or more so like when somebody's trying to say, well, you know, evolution's true because we have carbon dating. According to science, the universe is estimated to be billions of years old, while some interpretations of the Bible suggest the Earth is only a few thousand years old. So which one is right, science or scripture? Let's dive in to find out. What would you okay, well, sort of discuss? I'm absolutely that? convinced the universe is at least 62 years old. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right, I throw my mom in there, it's at least 86, all right? Um, actually, I, um, I think the evidence is better the universe is old, mm -hmm. okay? Um, it's a perfectly legitimate interpretation of Genesis 1 to think that it's young, mm -hmm. but I don't think it's necessary. Why? What does the first verse of the Bible say? In the beginning. In the beginning, God, God created, created the heavens and the earth. Okay, when did God create the heavens and the earth? Does it say when the beginning was? No. What's the next verse say? And the earth was formless and void. Wait, 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 wait. We've gone from the heavens and the earth, which there wasn't a Hebrew word for universe. Heavens and the earth meant the whole universe. We have the whole universe created in verse 1. The next verse, suddenly we're talking about the earth. How long did that take? Does it say? Doesn't say. You say, what about the days? The days don't begin till verse 3. <laughs> If you want to take a hyper-literal view of Genesis, the heavens and the earth are created before the days ever begin. Okay? Now, John Lennox has written a book called Seven Days That Divide the World. You ought to read that book if you're interested in this topic. Okay? But there's one other uh, insight that I think is important to think about. When you're reading the Bible, you need to remember that the Bible was not written to you. The Bible was written for you. Who was Genesis 1 written to? Who was it written to? The Israelites who were just wandering in the desert. They're wandering in the desert over 40 years. They just came out of 400 years of slavery in Egypt. When they're walking through the desert, they're not asking the questions we're asking in the 21st century, right? They're not walking through the desert going, I wonder how old this place is. You know, <laughs> that's not their question. Their question is, is Yahweh the true God or are the gods of Egypt the true God? And many scholars now are saying that Genesis 1 is a polemic against the Egyptian creation stories. What's a polemic? A correction. And if you look at the Egyptian creation stories, there are these pre-existing gods inside the universe. They're sort of like superheroes. They're not outside the universe, they're inside the universe. And they have to fight one another to bring order to chaos. Moses comes along and he says, that's not the way it happened. Yahweh is outside the universe. He doesn't have to fight anybody. He just speaks and brings order to chaos. So it seems Genesis 1 is a polemic against the Egyptian gods. It's not there to tell you how old the universe is. All right? Mm -hmm. Is it, could you interpret, you could interpret it that way. But I, I don't think it's necessary. And that's what John Lennox also points out in the book, Seven Days to Divide the World. In fact, Lennox will say, the Bible leaves the age of the universe indeterminate. All right? Awesome. Yeah, thank All you. Right. No. Good question. Thanks, Zach. In his book, Seven Days That Divide the World, The Beginning. According to Genesis and Science, John Lennox explores how the biblical creation account and modern scientific discoveries, particularly about the age of the universe and Earth, can actually complement each other rather than conflict. According to current scientific research, the universe is approximately 13.8 billion years old, and the Earth is about 4.5 billion years old. These estimates come from methods like radiometric dating, which measures the decay of radioactive isotopes, and cosmological observations such as the universe's expansion and the cosmic microwave background radiation. This evidence, combined with the study of stars and galaxies, has led scientists to agree on these numbers with a high degree of confidence. Genesis 1 starts with the well-known phrase, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. 
Genesis 1.1. But as Lennox points out, the Bible doesn't give a specific timeline for when this happened. Many Christians interpret the six days of creation as literal 24-hour days, which leads some to hold a young earth view. However, Lennox emphasizes that the Hebrew word for day, yom, is flexible. While it can refer to a literal day, it's also used elsewhere in the Bible to describe much longer, indefinite periods of time. For example, Genesis 2, 4 describes the entire creation process as happening in a day, suggesting that day might not always mean a literal 24 hours. Lennox proposes that the days in Genesis 1 could actually represent long epochs or periods of time, which would align with scientific findings about the universe's age. Lennox personally supports an old Earth view, which aligns with the scientific evidence that the Earth is billions of years old. He stresses that this view does not contradict the Bible. For Lennox, Genesis 1 is less about the specific time or method God used to create the world, and more about who created the universe and why. He argues that the text leaves the age of the Earth open to interpretation, and that Christians can explore scientific findings like carbon dating and cosmology, without feeling like these discoveries conflict with their faith. Additionally, Lennox highlights that Genesis 1 was written with a theological purpose, possibly to contrast with ancient Egyptian creation stories. While Egyptian myths involve gods battling within the universe to bring order, Genesis presents Yahweh as a god who exists outside the universe and creates with effortless authority. According to Lennox, this is the central message of Genesis, rather than the specific timing of creation. In Seven Days That Divide the World, John Lennox argues that there doesn't need to be a conflict between the Bible and science when it comes to the age of the Earth or universe. While science strongly supports an old universe, Lennox reminds us that Genesis 1 doesn't provide a specific timeline. Instead, it emphasizes God's role as the creator and the purpose behind creation, leaving room for both young Earth and old Earth views. Christians, he suggests, can embrace scientific discoveries while holding firmly to their faith. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to check out the rest of our content. We have lots of videos that dive into similar discussions on Christianity, morality, the Bible, and other big questions about faith. Whether you're curious about the Bible's authority, want to explore Christian apologetics, or love watching debates with skeptics, we've got something for you. Explore our channel for more answers to these important questions and gain a deeper understanding. There's so much more to discover. Don't miss out.